Things have fallen into place for you. You've taken the steps, you're ready to rock, and you're so excited about growing your dietitian private practice. And there's one thing that came up. You found out you're pregnant. Let's talk about what that means. If you're wondering, can you run a business and have a baby at the same time? I'm gonna share with you how we've supported dozens of women on their journey, whether they fall pregnant during our programming or whether they're delivering a child with us. That is something we have helped literally dozens of registered dietitians from helping them with high ticket coaching programs to memberships to courses. We've been able to find a journey and a path that have been able to support them for their unique needs. And I'm going to tell you how we can help you as well. Now, it's not impossible to have a business and deliver a baby at the same time. Here's how our client Julie did it. My name is Julie Schaub and I am a dietitian boss with an online course. Here's what a day could look like for me. In the morning, I snuggle my baby and then go for a hike. I might run some errands with my family after that. I pop on Instagram and use video clips like this one to post about my niche, like ultra running. Then in the evening, I enjoy spending time with my family and my two girls and my husband. You're gonna need to focus on productivity while also parenting, which can be really challenging if you're new to time management. Now, another thing to plan that we've helped our clients with is fourth trimester planning. So you might not be realizing that it's so important to plan after the delivery of the baby, as far as you know, months after, three plus months after the baby is born, to think about how you want your lifestyle to look. Because everybody has a unique lifestyle. So thinking about what that means for you and taking some time to reflect can help you make decisions that feel really aligned as a dietitian. The best way to start a business while pregnant is to plan for it. You just wanna decide how you wanna run your business. Think about what profits do you need to live off of and then design your lifestyle in reverse. Think about the decisions that you're gonna make based on the level of profitability that you wanna maintain as a dietitian and private practice owner. Ask yourself, what stage of business are you in? Are you planning your content? Have you launched? Are you growing your business? Or are you maintaining because you've reached all the goals that you've set? First, identifying your stage of business can help you then make decisions about what to do next. Ask yourself, do you have regular clients? How many? And what does your relationship look like with your clients? Because it looks differently for those of you offering a group program than it does with those of you who are offering private coaching than it does for those of you who own a group practice and you manage coaches under you. Ask yourself, how are you currently making money? Meaning what is the business model that you're using? Do you have a team? And ask yourself, are you just starting out or have you come up with a way to make money without trading time for money? Meaning, have you been able to create leveraged or passive income, whether that be through memberships, speaking, or course creation? And then ask yourself, have you been able to supplement your income through digital products? Ask yourself if you have a staff, if you've had a virtual assistant or anyone that you've worked with in the past or currently that you've been able to train to support you at all with some of the tasks that you need to complete on a regular basis. Maybe you work with coaches or maybe you have an editor who might edit videos like this for YouTube or maybe your podcast or other types of content depending on what media channels you use to reach out to your audience. Ask yourself, can you create a wait list for something, maybe for a program that you wanna launch. And when can you do that? Because creating a wait list can help you learn about what demand you have for your products and services. And learning behaviors through creating things like a wait list is a fantastic way for you to market a little bit better. Now, when you do things like put out a wait list and learn how many people are interested by the amount of people who volunteer to be on your wait list, right? Who opt in to your landing page, that's gonna tell you a lot about what you should do next. The thing about marketing is that it's not just this one and done process. Marketing is very iterative. You're gonna test something, you're gonna test it again, you're gonna get some data and numbers and record it and reflect on the last time you did the same thing and then you're gonna test it again. That's no different than when you're gonna put out a wait list for a product that you might not actually release until a later stage, perhaps after your fourth trimester. Now, if you're wondering how we've helped clients with their pregnancy planning, I want you to watch this clip. This is our client, Julie who is showing a day in the life of uh, selling a course. This is her morning routine with her daughter, a workout with her friend, and enjoying the scenery. And then she's creating reels for her Instagram account, Ultra Runner Nutrition, and there's her husband. And she's able to do this and have energy during the race. She's able to pick up her daughter from preschool. And then finally, she's able to gain the flexibility and enjoyment that she's hope to achieve by starting her business in the first place. If you're wondering how long it takes to start a private practice, well, it can depend. 
It can take anywhere from three to 12 months. In fact, I was thinking of creating another video to go through that step by step. If you're interested, comment below and I'll consider. The reason it doesn't happen overnight is because there's a lot of skill building that you're going to need to master as the owner. You see, as the owner, we have to learn how to practice decisiveness, problem solving and communication skills that we might not have otherwise been able to master to the level that you will need as a private practice owner. And if you're looking to become profitable and maintain profitability as a private practice owner, which many of us want, the skill set required to create a profitable model and maintain profitability is not the same skill set that it took for you to actually make money in the first place. So being really receptive to learning new things and progressing in an analytical fashion, thinking about different steps and stages, almost like school, is going to help you start to understand what more you have left to do to reach your goals. Now, maybe you want to make six figures and maybe you just want to make a few thousand dollars a month. Whatever that goal is, you're still going to need to apply the same skills to get there and to maintain that goal ongoing. You're going to have decisions to make with a private practice, asking yourself, are you going to take insurance, cash pay, or a combination? What type of private practice do you want to create? Do you want that in person? Do you want that virtually? Do you want to do a combination? You see, the list goes on and on when it comes to making decisions, which is why I created a business plan inside of my proprietary process that can help you through these guiding decisions. So if you're interested in getting support in my membership, I want you to grab a link below and you're welcome to join today. If you do choose insurance, credentialing can take anywhere from three to five months. During that time, there's a lot of other stuff that you can do uh, when you're setting up your private practice. But keep in mind that you know some of these steps, especially when it comes to compliance and licensure, they can just take a little bit of time. While you're waiting, you can focus on your marketing strategy. How will you get clients? You can focus on your brand messaging. Who will you serve and what problem will you solve for them in the market? You can think about branding, what's unique about your personality and how will you stand out from your competition. And you're going to have to think about business model. How do you want to make money? And that's my favorite topic, right? Do you want to make money passively? Do you want to make money through a leveraged way where you're earning money from speaking or from memberships? Or do you want to focus on active income where you're trading time for dollars and you're doing a lot of coaching? So these decisions are going to be based on what you think and feel, and they can absolutely change with time, but that's what's going to help you decide how do you want to start your private practice and how long will it take? These decisions can be even more compounded if you're pregnant or expecting a child, and which is why it's important for you to sit and reflect about what is something that you value and when do you want to reach those goals? And then giving yourself some permission to be flexible and to learn with time because there's a lot of lessons that we just can't anticipate. If you like this video and you want to learn more about what it's like as a dietitian to start and grow your private practice while working full time, I want you to check out this next video on screen.